Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. Today we're going to focus in on Viva La Fiesta and the float that went down State Street, actually went up State Street. And with us today I have Dan Flynn and Walt Stevens. Welcome, you two. Thank you. Thanks, Wade. We're going to be talking about the float and how that float was built, constructed, and designed. So uh, we'll start with you, Walt. Walt, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, well, I've been in Rotary for about 20 years now. My brother-in-law brought me in. Uh, actually, I was doing many of the things I do in Rotary now. Before I was a Rotarian, I was working here as a volunteer for the Sheriff's Department and uh, did that for about 25 years. Uh, now that I'm in Rotary, it gives me the opportunity to really expand my horizons. And basically, I'm a resource manager. I just manage our resources here and move them to parts of the world that don't have the, the abilities that we do here. Sounds good. Thank you. How about you, Dan? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, Wade, I'm a recent transplant to California. I've only been here about nine months. Uh, I moved here with my wife from St. Louis, Missouri. And back in Missouri, we were both uh, Rotarians. Uh, I come from a Rotary family. My, my father's claim to fame is that he has 40 years of perfect attendance wow. for, for Rotary. Um, and so when I came out here, one of the first things I looked up was the local Rotary Club to get involved and to get to know people in the community. So uh, back to you then, Walt. Tell us how you got involved with the uh, Fiesta float. Well, I got involved with Fiesta. We used to, uh, well, uh, now, uh, Nilo Fanuki is still around. He's past district governor of 5240 here. And he brought me in and said, I need some help building the floats. I went down a couple nights a week and helped him build the first three floats. Then after that, uh, Nilo kind of retired from building the floats. And I took over and been building floats now for about 16, 17 years. Wow, very nice. Now, how about you, Dan? How did you get involved with the uh, float this year? Well, the, the Rotary District put out a newsletter of upcoming events, and they had mentioned the float and said that they needed people with construction skills. And living in an apartment right now in Carpinteria, uh, I, I miss using my tools and, and <laughs> things like this, and this was a, a, seemed like a great opportunity. Uh, Growing up in Missouri, I helped build a lot of floats, but the big difference out here is the uh, application of the flowers. Uh, we would only get to see those things on TV, like in the Rose Parade, and to be part of a, building a float that actually involved flowers from this area is really a unique opportunity. Tell us a little bit about, uh, about those floats that you built, because uh, you have some pretty interesting stories <laughs> there about that. My father was a municipal politician, and the city would always have its Veterans Day parades or Fourth of July parades. And my father was very handy, and he decided that the mayor should build his own float. So about the same size as the floats that in the Fiesta Parade, uh, but my father would build these elaborate things like uh, railroad locomotives where the wheels would actually turn on the wow. float and smoke would come out the smokestack. And uh, another year he built a, uh, a riverboat where he was actually standing up, you know, almost three stories in, in a <laughs> pilot house and, and smoke came out of the smokestacks and the paddle wheel actually turned as he went down the street. And so I kind of grew up with helping with those sorts of things. It, it's a very interesting project. You get to be very creative with it. And then again, here, adding the, the whole flower aspect to it. That is nice. Now, you said he had to do that because, as a mayor, you built your own floats. Is that correct? Well, he didn't have to do it, but <laughs> he felt that the mayor should. And I think it came from he didn't think anybody could build it as well as he could. Okay. So he decided to build his own. <laughs> that would make sense then. Yeah. How about you, Walt? Experience uh, building floats? Well, Not just the Fiesta one, but... Well, I, I worked on this one, and it got, I got involved with the Rotary Rose Parade uh, float, which is our opportunity to promote Rotary to about 80 million people worldwide. Uh, the floats are quite a bit different in the budget that we have to work with. This float is usually built under $3,000, somewhere usually about, about $2,500 to $3,000. The Rotary Rose Parade floats run upwards of $189,000. But the difference is in the number of people you see in the animation and everything else involved with it. And every inch of the Rotary Rose Parade float has to be covered with vegetation, where if we were to do this with this float, it would be six, dollars $7,000, even with the discount we get from the local growers. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Let's jump into some of the pictures. Um, we got a pretty good f uh, set of photos here showing the construction component. The first picture we have is, I believe that's a view there, Walt, right? Uh, doing a little saw and build thing? Yeah, basically what I'm doing is I'm building a deck. We, uh, this year we built a representation 
of the Stearns Wharf, uh, which was uh, right in line with Frontiers, uh, Seafront Frontiers, uh, which was the theme for Fiesta Parade this year. Uh, it was the first time that the, uh, anybody had built uh, Stearns Wharf, so it was uh, an interesting approach. It, uh, basically what I build is kind of like what I did when I was in high school. It's a set. Basically what I'm building is a set. And it's going to go down State Street, or up State Street, actually. And people see it for roughly about 90 seconds. So it's, uh, it's a fun project. It's a, basically a small model. And we built everything from sunken courthouses last year to this year. We, we did the, uh, uh, fl uh, the float was based around Stern's Wharf, which meant I had to build a deck. And my concern is getting that deck built, because I never know quite how many people are going to ride on this thing. The rest of the stuff going up, could be so-so, but the deck needs to be sturdy enough to make sure people it doesn't collapse while it's going down State Street. <laughs> That's a good, good, good plan. I like that. Now, the design aspect, isn't that something that you do, one of the areas that you actually participate in, as in do? As in do. I have designed the last 16 floats, and they've wow. run from everything from uh, various representations of the mission, a couple of the courthouses with... Uh, a miniature of the original courthouse, which was considerably smaller than our modern courthouse. Our modern courthouse is now <laughs> quite a few years old, but it's it's a, but it it was very much different in size. And we did everything from uh, Moscow Island, which is where the airport sets, uh, to actually one year I built a lunar rover. It was a hundred year anniversary, and happened to be the same time that it was forty years of the lunar rover, which was built out in Kalita. Yeah. So. Okay. It was an interesting one because the front side had a, an old, uh, basically ox cart with a white adobe, and in the back side was a lunar landscape. When you looked at it from the front side, you could see the moon in the background as part of the, the round sphere that's set up there. And the back side was actually the Earth with the uh, <laughs> lunar landscape. And that time, our past district governor, Luz Maria, rode on it in a space outfit. She was the current governor that year, correct? She, yeah, the current yeah, governor. That, that was you, the current governor. Usually, typically, we try to get the current governor's writing on the float. It's, it's a good representation of Rotary in the community. Good, good. And by the way, I do like this one better than the one you had a few years ago where we actually had to walk. There's no riders allowed on that float. We, we get a little spoiled, so keep the riding. Keep the riders. Coming, okay, right? well, I like the interchange <laughs> with the audience, too. It's like, Okay, the next picture we have actually shows closer to the finished product of that one. Uh, Dan, why don't you go over this one? Talk to us about that uh, construction part of it, because you were instrumental in building this also. Well, one of the uh, things that Walt had just mentioned that I think is very important is that uh, he looks at this like a set design. Rather than trying to build a scale model of something, he's taking it from the aspect of building a set as if it were for a play. And one of the things that really uh, got me at the beginning of this was how much freedom that allows you. When you take scale out of it, and, and for instance, the, the shed that we're seeing in that picture, if that were to scale, you really wouldn't even be able to see it in this picture. Right. But it allowed us to blow up certain aspects and things like that. And on my first night of helping, uh, which was the first night I met Walt, I, I, he said, well, I have a drawing. And I was expecting, you know, like architectural drawings <laughs> that were going to be laid out. And what I got was basically a, a cocktail napkin with some pencil <laughs> sketchings. And, and that's when I, I realized I was working with somebody who really had a flair for this. And Walt has this amazing ability to help other people see this vision that he's got nice. for what's basically this set for a play. Okay, outstanding. The next picture we have is uh, somebody painting. Walt, would you know who that would be? Uh, uh, I don't remember his name. I know he's a Rotarian from the Santa Barbara Club. Okay. He comes down every year. He just shows up. You know, I send an invite out. He always shows up with brushes and says, I'm here to paint. <laughs> and he's, he's great because he's, he's a great set painter. He has a talent to make things look three-dimensional, which no, is a uh, talent most people don't have. And he, he comes in, and he, he does that, and he's quick. So he comes in the last minute. We ran a little behind schedule this time. So he was instrumental in getting this thing done. I remember talking to him and, and saying, would you like some finer brushes? And he goes, no, I'll be just fine with these. And it amazed me what the detail and, the, as you said, the, the depth perception he was able to get with these great big wide brushes. Wow. Most people would have to use like a little fine brush. but A little it, detail brush of some and, sort. And yeah, he's just and cranking he did, them out. Huh? Just cranked it out. <laughs> wow. It is impressive. So he did most of the detail painting overall on the float itself? 
He did the back side of it, and he did the front, the buildings. He did the uh, okay. windows on the buildings. And some of the way the float was designed is when you looked at it from the front, you were looking out to see, and when the float passed you, you were actually looking at the mountain range and as if you were coming in from sea and seeing the pier. Nice. So nice. It, then we had our banner back there. Okay, good. As part of that, we, uh, Walt's design included actually leaving the space underneath the, the wharf, just like it is in real life. You can sure. see through it, and, and he made all the supports look like the, the piers the pier that box. actually hold it up. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. I did see that one, and that was well done. Good idea Thank and good vision. We have some pictures now of the flowers, I believe, coming in. Uh, these first set of flowers, they were uh, purchased by and through at a very substantially reduced price from... Well, basically, the Carpinteria flower growers, uh, they're very good about uh, giving us flowers basically at wholesale. They used to donate them to us, and I said, this is just not fair. This is not the way Rotary works. You know, you people have a business, and you need to really sell us the flowers. So they're gracious enough to sell it to us at wholesale. This year I got to work uh, with uh, June Van Winkerton out there mm -hmm. that uh, I actually got blue flowers. We grow no blue flowers, basically. They have to be dyed. So it took us uh, a few weeks to get them dyed, so we actually had ocean this time. Oh, nice. Had to create the water. Had to create the water. The water Pretty was hard a big to part create of this. water with oranges, reds, and... We've Yellows. done it in the past. It just doesn't look quite right. <laughs> Not quite you know? right. <laughs> a little abstract. <laughs> Very good. The next picture shows um, sorting, I believe, and actually installing the flowers themselves. The installing the flowers, uh, most of the area that we are going to install flowers, we have to put chicken wire on first. The chicken wire is vital to hold the flowers in place. Uh, then you get the lighter people up on the float so they don't smash the chicken wires, and we work in this case, from the middle of the pier backwards. So as they put the flowers, they work towards the front of the float. And at the same time, the, uh, there's others. There's about 20 people down there usually putting. Everybody shows up to put the flowers on. That's the fun part. But that is a good part. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time, too. and it takes detailed uh, work to put them on and make them look like an ocean. So I had uh, crews of people working around the sides, putting blues, and then the, the base of it's covered with multicolored flowers. Now, these people are mostly Rotarians, or are they well, they are mostly Rotarians. There's some kids that come in. There's a few spouses. A few spouses. Okay. Basically, anybody that wants to come down. There's some people that show up every year to put these on. Karen is in one of these pictures here. Yeah, she's in the next picture. Yeah, and a picture so, of Karen there. So she comes down every year from Santa Barbara Sunrise. And she's just great, you know, she comes down. Uh, she coordinates writing the script for us a lot of times. She helps oh, okay. Us. And she actually helps promote it at the club, which is good in getting a lot of their members out too. And talk to us a little bit about the script. How is that organized, developed, well, and the plan for that? Well, the script, come, first of all, I've given a package. It says this is what it's gonna cost you to be in it and, the, and all the legal stuff we have to do with the insurance and everything else. Get that filed, then I give the, uh, Ro uh, Rose Parade, there I'm going. Uh, give the Fiesta uh, Old Spanish Day some ideas about what I'd like to do, and they give me a yay or nay on it. So I get a thumbs up on it. Once I get that, then I basically have an idea of what I'm going to build. Do uh, research on it to find out the historical values of it. I give that to Karen, and she's able to craft something about, in this case, it was Stearns and Hollister that built our... Uh, our wharf out here basically is for lumbering. It turned out to be it was exporting lumber and later sardines, lima beans, and citrus. And so it, it had a lot of historical value here. To this day, it's still the lo largest wooden deep water pier in uh, between uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco. Yeah, okay. So each one of our floats, it's a little piece of history that we give to the 80 million people that come here to see it. Uh, so we have a unique way that our parade works because we mix not only the horses, as we all know that the Fiesta Parade is the largest equestrian parade in the country right now, but with the floats it also gives a little historical background. And I try to focus on points of interest like the courthouse, in this case Stearns Wharf, which are tourist attractions. This basically is to promote Rotary and it also helps promote the city. Right, very good. Wait, if I, if I might interject, sure. again, one of the great things about working with Walt on a project like this is the research that he does. And he, this float was supposed to represent Stern's Wharf back in the 1880s. Mm -hmm. And 
many people might not know that Stern's Wharf has burned down three times now mm -hmm. and been rebuilt. His representation of the wharf actually showed a second leg which no longer exists. The current leg coming off of the, the wharf goes right onto State Street. There was another leg that curved off to Carpinteria and that was not rebuilt after the last fire, but to be historically accurate, we had that second uh, walk on the, on the wharf. And that was uh, railroad, right? It also had a railroad. That's how they got the commerce out there. Okay. They moved uh, the lumber out there and they actually moved a lot of citrus. If you look at where that leg terminated, it would be where the old ice house used to be or by Fess Parkers, okay. which they tore down a few years ago. So the script is actually used um, every half a block or so. There's mm -hmm. an announcer that would uh, announce the parade at, for the spectators along the route. Correct. So that, that's a good one. And that's our opportunity then to pass the message of Rotary on. It, it shows Rotary is active in the community. Good, good. Next picture we have is the uh, actual finished flood, I believe. Uh, this one is staged in on Cabrillo Boulevard, ready to go without the riders on. Yeah. Uh, finished product. How long would you guess it took to do that? And what we see right here, the construction phase of it. About a week? Two uh, weeks? It ha it's on and off. It, I started about two weeks before. I usually I, I get very little more time than two weeks to build these. So it's a quick float usually. Again, it's why it has to be a set. It has to be represented as a set. So you come up with the basic structure. And what you got to remember that this is a moving stage. So people are only going to see it for about 90 seconds. So it needs to be detailed so they get the image. They ooh and ah about it. Then the next equestrian per, uh, representation comes by, you know, which is riders or something else, mm -hmm. and they ooh and ah about that. Yeah. So it's yeah. that, that is true. Uh, again, beautiful job. The flowers sure set this one off without a doubt. The, the next picture we have is uh, the back side of the float, correct? Mm -hmm. um, and we have a banner on the back along with the participants. Those are the riders specific that uh, rode up the parade route. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the riders, I try to get uh, the current district governor, this time unfortunately because of medical reasons he couldn't come. So Wade and our immediate past district governor Jim Bell was, and his wife Donna was here. Uh, my nephew Rollin rode on this. Basically uh, he helped uh, work on it so I gave him the opportunity to ride on. Also it puts a, lo a younger image of Rotary out there because again this is a PR tool for us. This is to promote Rotary and it, it shows people that we have Rotarians of all ages. And it's the first time we actually got to put a uh, banner on the back side of that one. It is the first time. We used a banner. We have a large Rotary wheel that we typically put on there. Uh, but it's getting to look a little old, and this time, this also tells people what clubs are actually involved in it. it, it we leave it up to the announcers to announce the clubs, but sometimes that gets cut out. This way they get to see it, and most people don't see Rotary. They don't see the clubs. They see Rotary. They don't realize that there's actually nine clubs between Carpinteria and Goleta. And that's a, a really good point, Walt, is that this shows people all the cities in which Rotary is represented. A lot of people think, well, I don't live in Santa Barbara, or I live in Goleta, or I live in Carpinteria. Well, there's Rotaries there as well. And when you think about just this area, just this southern half of Santa Barbara County, uh, to have nine Rotary clubs uh, is a great opportunity for people. Very true. Let's touch a little bit on this one. Dan, you can give us a story on this one. Um, the height of that float and the backdrop on that. Uh, from what I understand, it stood. It was built a little bit taller than that. but Well, originally the float, you know, one of the first things that Walt uh, keeps in mind is there's, in the parade route, a point where we go under a bridge. The, the freeway. Or, the mm -hmm. freeway overpass, yeah. and which is 15 feet 3 inches. So uh, <clears throat> Walt designed the float to be 14 feet 5, just, you know, margin of error there. Uh, and it, as we were working on it, one of the weekends in which we were working on it, Walt had to be out of town. So I was working on it, on it for the weekend, but Friday night I got a phone call from one of the district officers who said that he had gotten a phone call from Walt, who said he had gotten a phone call from one of the parade <laughs> officials saying that we had to cut three feet off of the top of the float. And, you know, I said, I work for Walt, I'm the new guy, <laughs> I'm not sure what this is all about, but uh, about halfway through the construction process, we had to dismantle that back wall, cut it down by three feet, and build it back up again. And then, apparent, and uh, while I'm working on it, doing that, 
uh, two guys walked up to me and they said, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I was told I have to cut three feet off of that. And they said, well, why are you doing that? Well, we were told to by the parade committee. And one of the two gentlemen said, do you know who we are? And I just love it when people start a sentence like that. <laughs> and I said, no, I don't know who we are. Who are we? And he said, well, I'm the float chairman and he's the parade chairman. And we're the only two people who could make that call. And neither <laughs> one of us knows what you're talking about. So uh, uh, it, it was a little late. And, you know, they started running around making phone calls, find out who said what to who and all that. And then the uh, uh, float chairman came up to me and he said, can you put it back on? And I said, I can make wood shorter, but I can't make it longer. So, no, it's a little late now. That sounds uh, good. So it, it was a, a miscommunication. Uh, it, it, but that's the kind of stuff that makes for fun memories. Sure. One of these days, Walden and I said, remember that year they made us cut the float in half? <laughs> It'll be remembered. Absolutely. It'll be one of the stories. The next picture we have is a picture um, actually of it getting ready to roll, the float itself. And... Uh, Let's see, Walt, you were on the float, but Dan, we missed you. You didn't, weren't able to make it. There. I wasn't able to make it to the float. Uh, as I had mentioned at the beginning of the show, I'm new to the area and had no idea that the parade was on a weekday. Well, I had to work. So, <laughs> uh, but I, I got the most pleasure out of building it and, and seeing the pictures of it, that type of thing. That's what gave me my satisfaction, though. Next year, my wife and I plan on taking the Friday of Fiesta off work <laughs> okay. so that we can participate yeah. in more of the activities. Very good. Well, we look forward to you helping us out there also. We have the, a series or sequence of three photos now uh, actually on the parade route, and this uh, float is actually pulled by um, volunteers that come in with Jeeps, uh, part of a Jeep club that comes in and pulls it for us. And so we have three pictures there along the parade route. And what was unique this year is key news actually moved their location and their boom now to the actual turn at mm -hmm. uh, Cabrillo and State Street. So um, that, was, that was kind of neat and interesting. The next picture we have uh, shows the actual parade route from on top of the float looking down. And I don't know how many people were there, but uh, I can tell you this, it was huge. There was a lot of people along the full parade route. So. You know, one of the uh, two things that uh, I want to mention about the parade, again, being new in town, uh, this is my first fiesta. And uh, I find it absolutely amazing, because you don't find this back east, where the night before, people will lay out chairs or blankets or whatever around the parade route and leave them there and expect to find them there the next day. <laughs> uh, in, in large urban areas, you, you know, that chair would be gone in 15 true, minutes. True, you wouldn't uh, expect that. <laughs> that. That really strikes a newcomer to say that I live in a place where you can leave all your, and mark out your territory and it'll still be there. And then the, the other thing that I'm trying to figure out, and maybe you can clear this up for me, or maybe Walt can, you guys have been around this area for a long time. Um, do you feed the chickens the confetti first? <laughs> How does that work? Well, that's a good question. Uh, actually, there's a few confetti chickens I've seen, but not a lot of them. <laughs> there's a lot of scrambled eggs afterwards, actually. That's something that's brand new to us, is, is the <laughs> confetti inside the eggs. That's true. Uh, had, uh, I, I don't know if that's a regional thing or if that's uh, all throughout California, but my wife and I had never seen anything like it. I've never seen it outside of Santa Barbara. They, they have them around. I believe it's a tradition, tradition that came from Mexico. Yeah, but, I, I would mean, imagine. Not, not positive. I mean, is that. it something they do at the Rose Parade? No. Do you see no. No, no, no. No, they no, no, yeah. no. They have enough litter there. <laughs> the, the confetti is much bigger. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, the last picture we have actually is of the teardown. Uh, and that was uh, a volunteer group, but I understand, Dan, you did a substantial amount of it when it was parked on the street on Saturday, because we have to actually dismantle them in two days. Have well, and, and you also have to return the base of the float. Uh, and and um, a lot of people might not, might not understand this, but that base belongs to uh, Fiesta Days. And there's a you know, security deposit. You can't tear it up. You have to return it because they use them year after year. Uh, every one of those flowers has to be hand-picked off of there. It has to be completely cleaned. Uh, the, that whole Stearns Wharf, the building, the wall, everything had to be taken off. And it has to be done in such a way to where it leaves that base trailer relatively intact. You can't just rip it up and hand it back to them. Right, because it's a plywood deck. Yeah. yeah. Right, and there's a substantial deposit that there's you put on that. So, um, uh, 
yeah, tearing it down was was almost as satisfying as building it. <laughs> almost. <laughs> So um, this coming year, I guess the two of you will again be involved with the, the float? I will, uh, I'm sure I will. If I miss the meeting, I'm sure I'll be doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I enjoy doing it. I, I seriously do. And it, it gives me the opportunity. And actually, it gets, what it does, it gets the opportunity to bring the Rotary Clubs, the members of the club together, and just share stories because you get to know each other when you're sitting there working. It's something you can't do in a meeting. So it's just working together. It gives that camaraderie. And you find out, and uh, once you do it a couple times, the people come back usually. You know, they come back to do it. I have usually about three or four people that help with the construction every year. Unfortunately, this year, everybody was either in Europe or somewhere else. So it was a little harder this year to get it done. But if I get 10 people involved with it, I'm sure to have four or five people each year that can do it. And I hope to pass it off to Dan or something. Because so, I've been building for 16 years now. Dan well, has a passion for it. We found that out. <laughs> the, uh, there's also, a, a, as, as Walt alluded to, a social aspect of it, where when you're building it, depending on what stage you're in, there can only be two or three people up on yeah, that yeah, float at yeah. a time. But, for instance, our wives uh, were, were down uh, on the ground getting to know each other and mm -hmm. socializing. And True. it really is, uh, uh, whether you have the ability to do construction or not, it's a wonderful way for Rotarians from different clubs, all nine clubs, to socialize with each other. And then there's that kind of climax on the night before when everybody gathers, not only from the Rotary float, but all the floats, to put the flowers on. And that was the part that my wife and I had never experienced before. Yeah, yeah. But to see one of those floats be flowered in one evening by huge teams of people. True, because um, actually there's only nine floats, correct, in, in the parade itself? I think there was only eight this year, and it, that whole thing comes together. It's amazing. You know, you come there a week or two before, there's just basically those green beds sitting around there, and over that week these things just pop up, and then they magically become flowered. It's just, it's pretty amazing. It, it is amazing. Well, I, I, I've got to interject here, and, and, and I, Walt's just too humble to, to say this, but one of the things that I found very interesting, and I don't mean this in any way to belittle anybody else's effort, but it's my understanding that the Rotary Club is the only one of the floats that completely has a new design every year, this is true. rather than reassembling uh, uh, variations of previous years. Well, so, we, we can't wait for the next one. Uh, that's one thing that I'm going to be looking forward to, working with you two on that. Um, with that, thank you both very much for sharing that, the experience, and we're looking forward to seeing what next year is going to bring for us. Thanks, Wade. Thank you. Thank you. With that, thank you very much for uh, joining us, and take a look at Fiesta Float next year because Rory, again, is going to be out there with one of those great sets designed by Walt and worked on with Dan. We will see you next time.